So this, this, this piece, Merry Go Round, Fred had also done a painting of, of Funfest as well. And Nicola Bruce, who's um, Jackie's daughter, has a Fred Merry Go Round. So obviously wants to keep this piece to go together. She obviously went to all the circuses, which don't exist today. Obviously we have circuses, but they're, they're non-existent in this, in this um, point of view. And then you've got the Brighton Pier. Now what we noticed when we were putting these together, particularly with Goldie, is when we looked at Gus's work, there was a similarity. And similarity is obviously the way that they can paint and their perspective. So Gus is really well known for playing with people's point of view and observation. And the only way you can do that is if you can paint perspective impeccably. <laughs> so what we noticed when we were looking, when the work came in, is how these artists had the same tutor and their work completely speaks to each other. It, 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 it really does. Uh, and and, and it, it's just phenomenal. Even, obviously, this bird here, <laughs> it's, it's very small, isn't it? You see the real bird. So, obviously, Tiny. Gus has blown him up, put it in the occasion to full perspective. And then you get the Billingsgate scene, and obviously the birds the trees with Jackie. And we think everything obviously speaks to one another because of their tutors. They've never met before. Fred Elsie's they've never met in their lives, but they've had the same tutors at art school. I had to obviously beg Angie for this one. Because <laughs> this is so not like a Gus painting. So um, this is a very early Gus. I think Angie said it was when he was 16. It would have been 16. It's a flower portrait as well because this is actually glass. <coughs> but I think we did have Rachel saying she thought that might be <laughs> Fred because mm. there's obviously there yeah, is a sort of similarity there. Again. But um, yeah, these works we just thought really fitted extremely well together. And obviously, Jackie's Jackie's history is it needs to be written, you know, within the revisionist text or, you know, women within art history because it's it's so lost and it's not written about. We thought it was really important and actually I have to say, thanks to Fred, because we obviously were going to do this exhibition with Gus. Well, yeah. yeah, we, 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 we weren't actually able to talk to Fred who came to see his son show and um, was sitting with us and we, we said that we'd made this contact with Jackie and um, he just made the simple point that had she not gone to Ireland, she would have been an RA and she would have been part of that particular um, set that, that um, he knew very well. And um, uh, which, and, and basically said, of course she should have her in the show uh, <laughs> alongside us all, uh, which was great. Um, and um, we discovered these paintings. Um, a lot of them have been. Um, stored for many many years and uh, because basically Jackie um, like many women followed her husband to Ireland um, because he'd been offered a very good job at the NCAD and the University of, of, in Ireland in Dublin and um, she's quite well known actually uh, in Ireland um, her landscapes we've got none of the Irish landscapes here uh, but most of them have uh, found their way into galleries in Dublin and, and sold very well. Um, but the works that she did during this period in the UK, we got them. <laughs> so it's great to, to have them here and be able to show them. And um, it was lovely to have her here as well uh, because uh, they brought back many memories, I think, for her. Um, and Derby Day particularly with... Uh, I mean, this is like a narrative paint, it's such a great piece. Yeah. It's like quite, quite a lot of her family are involved in that, in, including a guy with the binoculars who I think is mm -hmm. Uncle Joey, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a butcher from uh, Smithfield. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's the temperance tent, you know. <laughs> in fact, it's, yeah, you couldn't get a drink in there. <laughs> it's the only place you could... Very famous story, 1965, um, Goldie escapes uh, uh, Avery at Regent's Park Zoo and goes to camp out 
actually at the children's park in Regents, she, uh, on top of the swings was, the, I think, the first sighting. And she found a tree nearby, went up into the tree and started to build a nest there. Um, but it was a kind of nightly news story, you know, six o'clock news, you know, the guy would come up going, Goldie has been sighted in Regent's Park, <laughs> here we are, you know. And it went on for weeks and finally uh, they, they actually got um, helicopters to drop a net over the, the swing park and recapture her, recapture Goldie and take her back to the aviary. Um, um, but it's a very brave painting, this, um, because, yeah, it's like um, The Great Escape. Mm. <laughs> and there she is, she's gone. And actually the Avery's do look quite, you know, dark and quite close. It's, it's the one painting you can see John Minton. Yeah. Yeah, so John Minton's mural illustrations, they're very, very famous, so it's almost conditioned. I don't realise they're John Minton. He's in so many books. And, mm. um, so, you know, massive rated artist, isn't he? Um, yeah. But taught by uh, just, he, he, I mean, I was so jealous when I first saw him. He, just, he, just, he used to draw with, in the studio with his students and just really, you know, bring, bring them mm. along and just, you know, chat, proper studio environments. And I just think, wow, God, what a guy. <laughs> can we, can we have him back? Hey, hey, hey. And Gus, a near neighbour um, in Harpsichord House just next door, wanted to go in and look at the, the skeleton of the house because they really took it back and created this amazing piece um, of the inside of this house, which includes um, showing um, some of the perspectives of where you go through uh, where St Clement's um, caves are. And one of the bathrooms, and it's actually in the cave um, where uh, St Clement's Caves are, are located. In fact, um, St Mary's in the Castle in Hastings, this wonderful building um, <coughs> within the Crescent. And um, again, Gus went in when they were building and uh, restoring the building. Um, so many uh, horrible cold. Yeah, and he's created this, it's got this beautiful cupola uh, with the light coming down onto the, the workmen, uh, restoring it. And um, it's like some, to me it looks like some sort of, it's almost like a kind of um, set of a kind of James Bond film or something. Mm -hmm. like it's from the, uh, I think you get a lovely sense of light. Yeah, painting, you do. Which is... It's and there's a feeling about the building. It, it, the building, I think, takes on a different dimension when you look at this. You know, it's like, um, you know, I think sadly somebody came in actually from the Barefoot Opera and said that they're about to do their last production mm -hmm. in St Mary's in the Castle and it's going to close for a while. I hope they mm -hmm. find somebody to come and support it because it's a wonderful venue and a beautiful building. Um, and um, you get this sort of sense that that was they wanted to bring it back to life there. That's in two thousand and uh, no, nineteen ninety two. Sorry, yeah, ninety two. So. Are amazing because obviously as you go up, you'll see his later works are, are very sculptural and abstract, more abstract than they are here. Um, and you can see the conversations he's having with himself. You know, his brain working and the cogs going. Um, they're really quite fascinating, and then you get these sort of really beautiful. What I really like about this is like, it just uses so many mediums. He's a watercolorist, he's a oil painter, he's a, you know, he's a pencil. He's, yeah, he, he sort of brings in everything, and then you get these incredible sculptures. <laughs> so he's a kind of man of, of many, of many <coughs> worlds. <coughs> But yeah, this this for me when I visited his studio, I I sort of got a sense of definitely how his how his brain was working. You get sort of equations going on here, and then conversations of going on obviously with himself. So add drastic elements, blah, and then you know this equation here. I just think it's it just adds a bit of insight to the sort of the question mark that he's got. <laughs> <laughs>